Hi, I'm the proud owner and CEO of FunnyDinosaurCreature.com, a website boasting well over one poorly drawn dinosaur. There's two. How was I able to achieve my success, you might ask? It had nothing to do with talent because all I had to bring me to the top of my industry was Squarespace. I've spent over four months and thousands of dollars pitching this website idea to my internet service provider, and they never responded. Luckily, Squarespace came in with their incredible 24-7 customer service, easy-to-use website building tools and templates. With the power granted to me by Squarespace and the savings I managed by going to squarespace.com runesmith, I was able to tear down all the useful interface options and get my website as simple as possible. I didn't need the analytical tools, the storefront, or the social links. I pretty much just wanted to market my only two drawings. Oh yeah, I also got a free trial and 10% off when I went to squarespace.com slash runesmith. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring the video. Have you ever thought about the lack of space travel in Dungeons and Dragons? I mean, I know you can't have guys riding around on horses fighting with sticks while a hundred feet away you have the Soviet Venera 7 prepping for launch, but magic is cool, it could probably get us into the stars. Funny thing about that though, the Great Wheel, the World Tree, the World Axis, and most other cosmologies in this nonsense fiction we've all come to love, you literally can't fit space travel into it. Be it the crystal spheres that only have one solar system per reality, or the gridlock of heaven and hell, there's nowhere to go when you go up. And that's sort of why we have the astral plane, a reality of bodiless thoughts and dreams, where an ocean of silver replaces the need for that inky void. Which is exceptionally ironic considering the fact that those crystal spheres were introduced by a series called Into the Void. But there's no such thing as a void. So let's look at the world beyond time, the astral plane. This infinite expanse of true nothingness isn't exactly a location, which is partly true for all the outer planes. They're actually closer to memories and dreams than anything else. All of them are places you can visit with your thoughts and emotions, but they aren't exactly solid and you have very little control over what happens in them. The way I could best describe the astral plane is actually by telling you how to get there. You can't. Well, your body can't. The only way a material being can travel to the astral plane is the same way you visit VR chat servers or take too many you can see things and you can interact with them. You're allowed to change the place that you visit, but your body isn't really a part of the equation. Only your mind is, or rather your astral self. To run through the apex arcanum, astral projection. You just fucking yeah. yeet your soul from your body like Doctor Strange and float around with your astral dick flopping around while your body sits there, ripe for pranking. I'll explain why you'd want to project your star self a bit further once we get to the color pools. Now the astral plane is far from empty, as infinite space sort of fills itself out over time. The place is reserved for alien beings that can acclimate to this otherworldly environment. A few outsiders can travel here, like angels and fiends or evil old ladies, but we've also got a handful of natives. The Gith Yankee, alien freedom fighters slash pirates who ride space dragons, the three mind flayers that those Gith haven't killed yet, evil worms from outer space, a thousand colossal dead god corpses whose existence defies explanation, one celestial turtle and somewhere between six to eight normal sea turtles, a single futon for sale, and astral dreadnoughts. All pretty scary stuff, I mean who knows how many stains are there if you flip over that futon. The inspiration for the astral plane comes from Plato and Aristotle, who thought space was filled with ethereal aether, the fifth element of reality and the bridge between earth, heaven, and hell. The overarching theme being a lack of tangible matter, and without matter to experience entropy, time doesn't pass here. The gith are actually unable to age, eat, or drink because physics are as relevant to the astral plane as the 2008 comedy Step Brothers starring Will Ferrell is to this video. The gith actually have to use portals to planes that have normal rules just to raise their kids, and then pop back in. So that's really weird. Okay, I, I got lost. Let's, uh, let's go with <laughs> what happens when you get lost in the starry veil. So when traveling here via projection, your mental self is tied to your crisscross applesauce meat bag by a silver cord. Just think of the fate strings from good ol' Hercules. As long as this bungee cord is intact, you cannot be killed while projecting. You can, however, get lost in space. 
The only way out are disks of icky, paint-like goop called the color portals. These are actually the most common things you're going to find in the astral plane, and they look like someone flipped a coin of color into space so it just spins and moves forward forever. Hopping in one with your mental self causes you to manifest a sort of avatar in the outer plane that you entered. Like switching servers in a game, you just kinda load into your body. There are 20 variants of these colors, each one relating to the outer planes, the ethereal plane, and back home. But it's all really a matter of luck which one flies by you first, so take some mental notes. Now that we've really got a basic understanding of the benefits of traveling using the mass of nothing, let's run through the risks with an example. With the final destination spell, Astral Porjekin, you and up to eight homies can straight vibe out of your bodies to visit the astral plane, with the plan to stop at 7-Eleven and Elysium before it closes. One of the least likely complications is an astral dreadnought barreling through space, instantly critting every one of you and splitting your soul strings in half so you instantly gib in the comfort of your own homes. But one of the most likely problems, aside from not being able to find your little orange portal, is Psychic Wind which is a fantastic band name, or the name of a JoJo stand, so that's both. These roaming mental blackouts are kind of like black holes of condensed anxiety and memories that pass through the silver ocean like a cold front. They completely darken the expanse, shake travelers' minds to the core, and ultimately jumble up everybody's connection. Sort of like changing the radio station on each of the boys' intercoms. And then it just leaves in an instant. They can send you miles away, force you into random portals, or give you brain death if you can't withstand the force. So I'd say my biggest piece of advice, don't go through the purple-black checker box portals. I hear they lead to a 404 error. Uh, how do I end this? It's, it's a big internet for your brain, with roaming blackouts and viruses, and if you smoke a big beer, you can go there. Just try not to die. Also, it's pseudoscience. That's basically the astral plane. What a terrible video. 